Hey, it's Jessica Namasa with WTF Health, and oh my God, look what I have here. This is none other than Jonathan Bush. You are now the new chairman of the board for Firefly Health. That's yes, awesome. I am. Welcome back to Healthcare, friend. It's very exciting. Fresh, new car smell, <laughs> nothing to clean up for, yeah. uh, and just all dreams, all, all right. forward looking all day. Okay, so let's start out by talking about Firefly. Sure. Tell me about the company. Uh, why have you jumped in on this? They just raised money, 10 million, right? Mm -hmm. Oak led that round with um, F Prime, right? F Prime and O. Yeah, yep. very good. All right, so these are friends of yours. Threw some cash in there, yes, and, uh, and you're part you of know, the deal. Five million bucks, you got to be pretty good friends. It's, yeah. I think it's actually a good idea, too, I hope. All right, well, tell us about it. So Firefly, you know, during my little time off, oh, we'll get to, to that in a minute. Me, uh, you know, <laughs> what would you do differently if you got to do it again? Because you have to do it again, then there's, you're out. Uh -huh. uh, and I thought, well, geez, you know, actually making this whole kabuki theater of the doctor's office visit that everyone knows you don't need a little better mm -hmm. or making the whole bureaucratic nonsense of the medical claim a little bit cleaner is is better than you know selling cigarettes but it's not actually a total breakthrough okay uh Fair and enough. i thought if, you, if i had to do it again maybe i'd skip the office and skip the claim sort of do a full marie condo of all the things i couldn't stand dealing with uh in that space that blocks the connection between the doctor and the patient. In Firefly, uh, which This is, sounds like a little bit of a grudge against the healthcare system here. <laughs> well, we all love it. I mean, you know, I've got grudges against my mother, too, but I love her. I'll be at her grave. You know, I like, I, hopefully not for a long time. Okay. <laughs> Mom, you're perfect. Don't go anywhere. Okay. Um, Firefly. So Firefly, by, so that's the big idea, is clean out that stuff. So what we've come up with, what they came up with, and they invited me to help, is a really tight concierge medical practice for the average person so there's but but with no office okay so it's all virtual but instead of a like a teledoc which i love and was an early investor in uh which is more kind of a curbside like i don't know who you are you don't know who i am but right. you need a prescription and i need 30 bucks you know <laughs> this is actually yes. <laughs> you know hello jessica are you working on you know the anxiety plan that we set up for you we've gone and we've pulled all your charts that we've had from the past we think we've got you on the wrong you know wherever you came from put you on the wrong drug for the you know diabetes and we're going to try this it's this idea of a radically convenient like like a teledoc and other things that are emerging now proactive relationship based Navigator service. So three big things. Be as convenient as the new things. Be okay. a click away. Mm -hmm. Five minutes after you click, you're talking to someone on your care team that knows you, that you know, that has a plan that you have. Okay. Right? Proactive behavioral support. Anxiety, depression, frustration. These are the things that actually people want from the healthcare system yep. and you can't freaking get an appointment with a shrink to save your life. That's true. So these guys build the plan and actually work on that with their members. And lastly, really intelligent navigation. Okay. Lots of navigation companies show up to Health 2.0 and they're like, yeah, when someone gets cancer, we think they're going to call our call center, which is located next to Delta, enter their member number, mm -hmm. uh, you know, connect to their HR file, and we'll tell them where to go to get their cancer dealt with. I'm thinking no. no. I'm thinking someone you trust and like, and you get a little dopamine like, oh, hey, hey, Jessica. Oh, hey, thanks. You know, Mark, you know, it's not, I, I, I thought it was, you know, that I wasn't getting enough sleep, but I, I think there's something else, you know, can you, can you take this further? Yes, let's get you in for a, you know, a scan. The closest scan machine to you is actually not the ripoff hospital downtown at the U, but it's at an urgent care center that is two exits down from where your app says you are calling me from. So I'll very personalized. You. Yeah. The way it should be. Yeah, and the way we do that is we take all the money we would have spent on office overhead. Okay. Uh, and we just don't have an office. Okay. We rent space in the healthcare system that exists as we need it. And, you know, you meet with your doctor, but it's actually not your doctor's hands that are palpating the album, abdomen. It's whatever nurse practitioner is in whatever location uh, that you're in, you know, that we beam you into. Okay. Uh, and that allows us to be in the healthcare game with no dog in the hunt. I don't need to refer to myself. I don't need a certain number of x-rays or admissions or procedures or skin grafts to make my numbers. Okay. So speaking of making the numbers, how is this priced? Who are you selling this to? So it's a subscription membership. Fee. To direct to consumer? Um, we, so cons not yet because I haven't figured out the credit card thing, but mm -hmm. consumers will be able to pay, employers will be able to pay for their consumers. Got it. Uh, 
uh, and health plans can sign up if they don't mind, if they, in their heart of hearts, actually don't mind the cost going down. Oh. Health care plans kind of want that, but they also, you know, it's struggle because they're limited to a 15% profit margin, and so the only way you can make more money is if the whole thing goes up. But a lot of health plans really do want the cost to go down, and so they can, they can pay the capitated membership fee, and then we'll navigate the cost of that uh, member's uh, health care going down. All right, very cool. So it sounds like you've gone away, and you've come back, and you want to break the whole thing. How is this different? <laughs> like break it, you know, Machiavelli said, don't attack the castle. Okay. He said, just locate the castle and then maybe make friends with the farmers in the fields. Okay. You know, let them maybe carry a few pieces of your printing press into the castle. Okay. And maybe that unfavored priest will maybe print a few of your Bibles at night. All we're doing here is saying, hey, keep using the health, we, we're gonna use the healthcare system. We're gonna use all the big established places, but you know, only when we need to. Okay. And maybe only on margin and maybe only if the price is right. And you know, maybe the right place is actually in a different market, but since we can beam you in, you know, maybe our best Boston cardiologist is somebody at Mayo, right? So we're gonna use the system. Uber used established cars. They didn't show yeah. up with a new robot car. I mean, someday they maybe will do that. But today, I mean, when they got started, it was all the black cars at Boston Coach. And they're like, hey, you got a couple extra minutes? Why don't you do this ride on this app? That's Love how it. it's, it's like started. sharing economy and healthcare. Totally. Love Using it. a shared economy for our massively bloated, overbuilt healthcare and paying for it, you know, as much as possible without the tired old claims game. Okay. That's an interesting aspect of this without having to file claims. So, I mean, yeah. it, and how do you see that, I guess, ferreting out as things? So, is, is this yeah. aimed mostly towards like very healthy people? We don't people have it all built. We don't have, you know, yeah, the yeah, eBay running. But <laughs> today, what we have is members can pay or their employers can pay. 50 bucks a month, mm -hmm. and they get all the Firefly they can eat. Awesome. Included in Firefly are a series of what we call wholesale consults. So normally your doctor would send you a dermatologist or a cardiologist, but we're like, you know what, we think we have this. What we're gonna do is take your record and share it with our network of wholesale dermatologists or cardiologists. We will pay them instantly out of our pocket for advice, and then we'll turn around and take care of your meds or your prescription or your care plan without making you go to them, without adding another leg to the, okay. you know, Candyland game that patients have to go through. Uh, so those two pieces will become sort of instant payment, no claim, simple clean. And then little by little as we accumulate volume, you know, maybe soon we'll have urgent care rooms that are simple payment, no clean, you know, no, no claim. And, you know, over time, maybe it grows. Awesome. It's exciting to, to have you back and it's working on growing. It's exciting to imagine a clean right. new yeah. way of doing this. Okay, so I want to go back, though, to this period of time from when you left to here you are now. Yeah. Okay, and I want to ask you what you've learned yeah. during this, this quiet period where you had a chance to get out of the fray, look back at all of this yeah. stuff, look at the industry and see what the hell has gone on. Yeah. So tell me, I mean, where where do you think we're at now? I mean, obviously, digital health has missed you. Yes. Health tech has missed That's you. That's very kind so of where, you. No, we have, absolutely. Conferences have been a little boring. There hasn't yeah. been anybody on stage yeah. creating a fuss. So, I mean, but what have you seen as you've been watching this as an observer? What's been really interesting to you the last couple of years? Um, a, a, a gardening. Uh, I've really enjoyed. <laughs> we redid our garden in Maine, Faye and I. We planted a lot of 6,000, 3,000 plants over the course of the last wow. year. Uh, and one, a baby. So we have... Uh, baby love. Willa, who's with us here. New model of business trip with okay. baby. In fact, my oldest daughter is babysitting for my youngest daughter while I talk to you here. I offered. You could have strapped the baby to you. I you could have, done have, you should have taken new, me up on you that. You know, the new way of doing things. <laughs> no, but uh, seriously, though, so you, have you not been watching the industry at all? I have not. And what's great is I can come... The nice thing about so healthcare... all of this is new to you? Wait, let me catch you up on what has been going on. <laughs> yeah, that's the, what I was going to say is the nice thing about healthcare is you can leave for a year and come back and not miss much. <laughs> I don't know. There's a whole bunch of IPOs. <laughs> yes, IPOs. of Yeah. Uh, and, and in fact, some of the IPOs, I think, really speak to what I think is happening. I mean, all right, tell me what you think is so, happening. You're gone. You've not been paying attention all, but you're going to weigh in with some wisdom. Go. You know, we were talking about the Machiavelli idea of like, do we take on the castle or do we just little by little rejoin the loyalties of the people around the castle to a new way of governing, right? right? That's, that's what Machiavelli said. Don't take the guy on and bloody everyone. Just little by little tease him away, right? Right. So if you look at, for example, Lavanga was a big IPO. They didn't go in and say, I want to be another provider. They sat just just outside of the third party paid healthcare system. They went to the same person that the, you know, that Aetna might go to or the health plan might go to, and they said, why don't you, why don't you pay me for this thing and I'll more than pay for myself in just shrinking what's left 
sort of change the loyalties, yeah. the dollar loyalties of the healthcare system so that you just need it less. I'm not going to beat up the hospital. I'm not going to shrink it. I'm just going to make your patients need it less. The, one of the greatest, probably the greatest living healthcare entrepreneur, Richard Merkin, who started Heritage Medical Group out in LA, you know, all he did was he didn't you know, maybe he got a little bit of pricing power in his later years, but mostly he read a book in the emergency room and waited for people to show up and say, hold on, let me see if I can help you and get you taken care of so you don't need to be admitted here. Yeah. Right? That, at scale, using technology, is basically what we need. We massively overutilize a massively overpriced thing. Uh, and I think with technology, the ability to pull medical record data across these walls and integrate them, you can start to get a picture of where to focus your time to keep people from hitting the machine. Yeah. Uh, you can't really take on the machine. You can't blow the machine up. You shouldn't want that. Even on your worst day, I mean, this is the thing that prevented every single person blown up by the Boston Marathon bombers from being killed, except for the two who died instantly. I mean, right. it's a marvelous machine. It's just a little overpriced and a little oversized, and we just need to figure out how to use it less. Uh, be less addicted to it. Do you think, I guess, moving forward, we have a shot at resolving this? I mean, there's a lot of talk. I've, I've been talking to a couple people even today um, mm. about moving towards universal health care. And we know yeah. there's a hot button in the sure. presidential debates coming up. Um, and also, you know, the election, obviously. Yeah. So do you think that we're going to head in that direction ultimately? And really if so, does, how does that change things as far as all of us are concerned here in health tech? Right. I, I think we should all, it's a really difficult situation because we have these weird characters, political, like, incredibly polar. Now, after the polarizing efforts of the campaign, they sort of blend back, you know, there are no jackbooted thought police marching the street after mm -hmm. Donald Trump's election, and there would probably not be a great Maoist socialization of medicine after Elizabeth Warren's election. So that's just campaign talk. But I do think we all face a really big and important existential question. Much of modern society today is very bundled. It's all wrapped up into, you know, when, when, you, when you get Google, you know, it gets rid of Microsoft Word and it gets rid of all the products, the, all the software products you used to buy. You get it free in exchange for having your time wasted and your privacy violated. And mm -hmm. sort of like, eh, it's okay, okay trade. Yeah, yeah, it's good stuff. <laughs> but at some point you say, I, 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 think, I think I want that and I want some of my privacy back. I, I'm, I'm ready to unbundle that. Maybe I want to pay for YouTube and stop seeing these annoying ads, right? right? So there's a, there's a movement towards now that technology, now that inventions have reached scale, breaking them apart. This happened with the general store. You know, we went into focused factories and then we went, you know, to virtual. Medicine is in a similar place. Okay. It's, you know, the IDNs are wonderful and came about for all kinds of good reasons, but they've overbundled, right? Health plans are wonderful and came about for all kinds of reasonable reasons, but they've overbundled. The idea that you buy insurance against going to the doctor is like saying you buy insurance against getting gas in your car. You're going to get the freaking gas. Why are you going to file a claim with your auto insurer to get gas? Right. You're not. It's a stupid <laughs> idea, right? So. If the government sort of takes another step in, you'll see a further bundling and a further removing of the patient from the payer, right? It'll be even more abstracted away. If, um, and it's unlikely, just because there's so much of the money, you, you, I don't think we'll come up with the 31 trillion, you need to do that. Um, if you move the other way, you risk the safety net, but you imagine um, the unbundling creating more efficiency, right? Actually, I'm just gonna subscribe for all the doctor talk I need with right. Firefly, and there's never gonna be any claims, and there's not gonna be, you know, and you can see that happening with ASCs versus hospitals, and, you know, virtual care versus in-person care across other means, or focus factories and diabetes. All these things represent an unbundling which allows for a focus and a, and a dramatic, like not 10%, like 90% reduction in the cost of what we're using. So the market's gonna decide. Well, if, so the existential question is, will we let the market decide? Okay. Are we willing to risk the safety net a little bit? Because when you, when you unbundle it, some people don't buy it, it means they don't get it, yeah. right? The only way you can make people generate savings is if they can keep the money. But if they're given an all-you-can-eat buffet by the government or by their employer, they don't get to keep the money by shopping, so they don't shop. Right. right? So we have to decide, are we going to let people shop and, 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 you know, have some people make the wrong choices when they shop and watch them suffer? Or are we going to even further remove people from the products that they buy and consume and therefore have all kinds of bloat that we don't understand? And, and it's a really important question. 
different people can see it different ways. Yeah, sure. What I'm hoping is if Firefly and Lavongo and other companies are really successful, creating massively more cost effective and satisfying things, more of society will say, you know what? Let's go for it. Let's unbundle. Let's take the risk. Let's be a little more pro-risk and a little more innovative and, and, and build something that isn't like, let's modeled on Northern Europe, you know, socialism. Let's be like, let's try like as hard as we can to be like Sweden, you know. Okay, I mean, Sweden's great, but like, that's it? That's, we're going for Sweden? Like, what if we could try to be something extraordinary that the world hasn't seen that's uniquely American? I'd like to see that happen, and I think that companies like Firefly represent it. Awesome. Well, we are excited to have you back. I'm here glad in healthcare. to be I'm back. You are. I'm yeah. sure that garden and that baby have pretty much had it with you. They are. I am so done. <laughs> my, my fingers, my weed, I'm sunburned. I'm ready to be, you know, anxious, angry, pale, and hard at work. Oh, my God. That's how we love you the most. <laughs> awesome. Jonathan, thanks so much for Thank stopping you for by. It's a pleasure me, to talk with you. I'm Jessica DeMasso with WTF Health. Thanks so much for watching.